and nine starts. Heading towards the interval, Saints let Wraith back into the game when Ludovic Roy was adjudged to have wrestled Stephen Craig to the ground. Kenny Black hammered home the spot kick to level the scores. Early in the second half though, Saints forged ahead once more when big Mark Yardley flicked in yet another inch-perfect cross from Nicholson. But Wraith kept plugging away, and ten minutes from time, a speculative Kenny Black lob was met by Jay Steen on the volley, and his shot had just enough power to beat Roy and square the match. And that seemed to be it, until in the dying seconds, yet another Nicholson cross found the unlikely head of skipper Tom Turner, and his unorthodox header found the net and secured all three points. Even he couldn't hide his surprise. I thought I was actually going to get... The goalkeeper was going to come out and clatter me, you know, I just went up and I, seemed to kind of, I think I shut my eyes and I just let it come off the, the top of my head, glanced it round and the next minute as I turned and my, my momentum came to run there and I just seen it selling out the back of the net. For the next eight weeks, Tom Henry's black and white army went on the rampage. St Mirren's fourth goal at Capolo probably best illustrated the effort and determination Saints players were willing to expend for the cause. Heading clear a Morton corner in his own box, Big Scott Walker then charged upfield and took a return pass from Mark Yardley. He then laid it off to Hugh Murray, beeline for the penalty box and finished a 90-yard gallop upfield to head home one of the most thrilling and well-received goals of the season. Quite magnificent. And the Saints marched on. The trip to Inverness, however, brought Saints' winning streak to a halt, Mark Yardley scoring his 13th goal of the season in a one-all draw. At the halfway stage, St Mirren were on top, six points clear of Dunfermline. they just won eight games on the trot, a club record, followed by a draw against Inverness Cali. Championship form, surely. The manager must have been happy. 
Well, we started to believe that we had a real chance. I mean, the more we played, the more we won, the more we kept the run going, and the longer that happened, the more you start believing that, hey, there's a real chance here. We knew we had a short, small squad. We knew that suspensions and injuries could perhaps wreck our, our hopes. And we also were playing a lot of good football at the time, but the parks were conducive to that. They were good surfaces, we were knocking the ball about well, we were scoring goals freely. But we knew also there had to be the bad times when you had to roll up your sleeves and put in some gritty performances when the surfaces and the overhead conditions would not allow for good football. So there were still many questions to be answered. We were optimistic, but we still didn't feel at that time that the, the, the First Division Championship was ours. We knew there was a long, long way to go and we knew there was many hurdles for us to cross. Um, but certainly that run, these nine games and in the draw up at Inverness, definitely we begin to think that, listen, not only can we go up, we could perhaps go up as champions. A look at the league table at halfway stage probably had some bookmakers a bit nervous. But if they were, then Saints form in the third quarter of the season, perhaps with them nodding smugly and quietly thinking, told you. With Ludo out with a groin injury, Derek Scrimger took over in goal when Ayr came to Paisley on December the 18th. The visitors shocked home fans when Neil Tarrant took advantage of a Tommy Turner slip and crossed for Roddy Grant to shoot the visitors ahead. Saints equalised in the 48th minute when a Nicholson corner was flicked on by Yardley and Barry Levetti headed in at the back post. More like it. But with two minutes to go, United stunned the home support with a sucker punch. Neil Tarrant outstripped Barry McLaughlin and fired past the hesitant Derek Scrimger to inflict Saints' first home defeat of the season. The big Boxing Day clash at Dunfermline was postponed due to a flu epidemic in the Saints' camp. So on January the 3rd, Morton were St Mirren's first foots at Love Street. But the traditional Paisley hospitality was not in evidence as in 48 minutes Mark Yardley latched on to a Scott Walker header and Saints said, Happy New Millennium. But in 67 minutes, Morton equalised through an on-loan Paul Hartley, who drilled home a free kick from 25 yards. Saints pressed hard for a winner, but veteran keeper Ali Maxwell was in top form. In 86 minutes, he denied Sergei Baltaccia with this fingertip save. Two minutes later, he foiled Mark Yardley with a fine block. Final score, one all. Five days later though, and Saints were back to their winning ways, with Junior Mendes picking on Airdrie once again. Gary clinched the victory with a third and the happy Saints fans left the Love Street end knowing that they wouldn't be standing there for much longer. Chairman Stuart Gilmer had to make a stand. Well, we had a long chat with Tom about that and, you know, we obviously had to stress all the way through as we knew that we had to put the stand in place. Um, we were very fortunate that we got the, the last of the grant money. We were also fortunate that we were able to bring a new director on the board. Um, we also got the support of the fans. Um, I have to mention uh, the raffle, which was run by the fans, was a magnificent effort. Uh, and I think brought the fans closer again to the club and realised that they were a major part of that. Late January, early February was a bleak midwinter for the Buddies. A couple of 2-0 defeats to Falkirk and Livingston saw Saints level on points with Dunfermline. The visit of Inverness Cali was seen as a must-win game. The boys duly responded, and Mark Yardley, who else, opened the scoring in 23 minutes. Midway through the second half, Gary Bowman scored his first goal in the black and white, and Saints stretched their lead at the top to two points, Dunfermline having drawn one all at home to Morton. On February the 19th, with both teams out of the cup, Dunfermline and Saints played their postponed Boxing Day showdown at East End Park. And in total contrast to their first meeting, it was Saints who rode their luck to come away with a point. 
The St Mirren goalmouth led a charmed life that day, with Ludovic Roy proving to be one of the best keepers in the country with a string of fine saves. His display of bravery and agility kept Dunfermline at bay until the stroke of half-time. Stuart Petrie picked up the ball some 40 yards from goal and with the Saints defence backing off, he unleashed a 35-yard scorcher to give the Pars a deserved, and pressure at least, 1-0 half-time lead. The second half continued much the same as the first, with Big Ludo, the outstanding player of field. With the Pars looking to put the game away, this double save midway through the second half kept Saints in it and gave them hope that they could salvage something from the match. A something that didn't seem likely when Saints had skipper Tom Turner red carded after an hour. But with 10 minutes left, they managed just that. Ian Ross centred, and Ian Nicholson rose to bullet home an unlikely equaliser which sent the Saints fans nuts. Ludovic Roy was the hero of the hour, and manager Tom Henry was cautiously optimistic. We played today. Uh, you know, East End Park's never an easy place to come in and, and win. Uh, that's us now had two draws and a win against Northumberland. We've got difficult games coming up. This is an incredibly important time in the season. And if we can win our game next week uh, and we can look at the rest of the results, who, who then knows? But we're now in a countdown stage. We're nearly at the last ten. And I've said before, if we can go to nine games left with a five-point lead, we'll be very hard to catch. The next week, Saints were back in Fife, this time against Wraith. It was still made for 85 minutes, then the home side took the lead after a near post strike from Paul Tosh. A year ago, heads might have gone down, but this was a side with a new sense of spirit and determination, and Mark Yardley showed resilience and power to earn the equaliser. Many thought that would be that, but Hugh Murray and Junior Mendes had other ideas. I think we can safely say that everyone was fairly happy about that goal. Late into injury time, Wraith pushed for the equaliser, but once again, Ludo was in the right place at the right time. When the final whistle blew, three huge points had been gained and one very significant point had been made. I think the game at Wraith Rovers summed it all up. We were a goal down against ten men with five minutes to go and everybody must have thought it was going to collapse. Um, we went on, we scored two goals in the last five minutes and I think there was a right belief after that game that maybe this was going to be our year and we could go on to win it and I think for myself personally that's the game that sticks out most for me. The following week though, it was back to earth with a bang when the Pars came to Paisley. Stevie Crawford scored two belters which created a league position which did not make good reading for Saints fans. At a crucial point in the season, Saints fell back to second place. Was the bubble about to burst? Well, the pressure was building every game and every game we played uh, was becoming more important than the last one. Dunfermline, to be fair, kept the pressure on us because they kept winning and every team, the kudos of, of, of beating the lead leaders meant that we had you know, 10 cup finals to play. But as I said, the, the players showed remarkable resilience and a few times we, we you know, we got late winners